These are the stories making headlines at this hour. Around 100 people have been killed in Iran after twin blasts near the burial site of an Iranian military commander. While no one has claimed responsibility, Iran has vowed to punish those responsible. The latest incident adds to rising tensions in the Middle East. President Yoon Suk-yeol begins his New Year policy briefings from ministries, with citizens taking part in discussions for the first time. During the first session of the economy, the president vowed easing household and business regulations. The minutes of the U.S. Federal Reserve's December meeting suggest that policymakers are seeing rate cuts as likely this year. But the timing remains highly uncertain as they keep a cautionary tone. Good afternoon. Around 100 people have been killed in Iran after twin blasts near the burial site of an Iranian military commander. While no one has claimed responsibility, Iran has vowed to punish those responsible. Ian He has the latest. At least 95 people have been killed and at least 211 others injured after a series of blasts near the burial site of slain military commander Hassan Soleimani in the Iranian city of Kerman on Wednesday. Iran state media says at least one of the explosions was caused by a bomb placed in a suitcase inside a car and appeared to have been detonated remotely. The second blast occurred some 20 minutes later when rescuers arrived following the first explosion. The explosion of two bombs came on the fourth anniversary of Soleimani's death in a U.S. airstrike, threatening to increase tensions in the Middle East even more. An earlier death toll of 103 was revised down by Iran's health ministry, which said some names had been repeated on the list of victims. However, with many of the injured in critical condition, the death toll could rise. Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, said the evil and criminal enemies of Iran had murdered a large number of people in Kerman, adding that the attack will be met with a harsh response. The Ayatollah added that the attacks came as heartless criminals tried to prevent people from visiting the grave of Soleimani. No one has claimed responsibility for the blasts. However, a senior Biden administration official said the blast appeared to represent a terrorist attack of the type carried out in the past by Islamic State militants. The deadly blasts come amid rising tensions in the Middle East after a drone attack in Beirut, which killed Hamas's second-in-command. With Iran-backed Hezbollah saying Israel are responsible for the drone attack earlier this week, the militant group's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, said the deaths of senior Hamas leaders would not go unpunished and warned Israel any war in Lebanon would come at a very high cost. Nasrallah, however, stopped short of declaring war against Israel. Ian He, Arirang News. Over in Japan, New Year's Day devastating earthquake has taken many lives, at least 78, and thousands are staying in shelters. Many people are still trapped under the collapsed debris. Choi Soo Hyung has the latest. At least 78 deaths have now been reported from the earthquake that hit Ishikawa Prefecture in the west of Japan on the first day of 2024. According to Japanese media outlets on Wednesday, more than 500 aftershocks have been monitored following the magnitude 7.6 quake. Almost 400 people were also injured in Ishikawa Prefecture and neighboring areas. Currently, over 34,000 people are staying in shelters and the damage from the earthquake is severe. Shortly after the earthquake, more than 200 buildings in Wajima City were completely destroyed by fire. Nearby Suji City was hit by a tsunami, submerging areas 100 meters inland. Major roads were cracked down the middle in places, with some cars falling into holes cast by the quake. Many rescue workers with the Japanese Self-Defense Forces have been trying to rescue people from collapsed buildings and supplies are being transported using helicopters. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida says there were more than 130 urgent requests for rescue from collapsed buildings, and it's a race against time. We will also strengthen our system by more than doubling the number of rescue dogs in the South Defence Forces and police, and will do our best to provide emergency life-saving rescue. Local media others say casualties are expected to rise and that there is still a chance of more aftershocks. Moreover, a total of 15 millimetres of rain is forecast until Thursday, raising concerns about landslides. Chesu Hyung, Arirang News. 
President Yoon Suk yeol has pledged bold and decisive measures to ease regulations on household and business activities this year to prop up the domestic economy. This came during the first session of Yoon's revamped New Year government briefings with citizens taking part in discussions for the first time. Thursday's session began with Finance Minister Choi sang mo presenting ways to stabilize price levels and livelihoods across the country. Participants, including small business owners, homemakers and young workers, expressed the need to cushion the impact of high inflation and interest rates. Yoon's office says the South Korean leader said the government must go beyond reviewing to acting and solving problems, emphasizing the need to improve tax policies and make it easier for SMEs to access finance. The South Korean police issued an arrest warrant on Wednesday night for the suspect involved in the stabbing assault on Lee Jae Myung, the opposition Democratic Party leader. The 67-year-old suspect, surnamed Kim, is charged with attempted murder for stabbing Lee in the neck. The substantive review of Kim's arrest warrant is scheduled for today. Earlier on Wednesday, a search warrant was issued for the attacker's residence and his real estate agency office in Chungcheong Namdo in Asan. The DP chairman is now in recovery at Seoul National University Hospital after surgery. South Korea and the U.S. have held their first joint combat shooting exercise of the year. The seven-day drill began last Friday at a training center in Pochon City, Gyeonggi-do Province. According to a military press release on Thursday, the exercise was held to verify the interoperability of Seoul and Washington's military assets and to further strengthen the Allies' operational capabilities amid a severe security situation. Around 110 vehicles, including Seoul's K-1A2 tank and Washington's A-10 attack aircraft, were deployed. The minutes of the U.S. Federal Reserve's December meeting suggest that policymakers are seeing rate cuts as likely this year. But the timing remains highly uncertain as they keep a cautionary tone. Shin Sebyeok has the details. U.S. Federal Reserve officials agree that interest rate cuts are likely in 2024, but exactly when remains uncertain. That is according to minutes from the Federal Open Market Committee's December 12 to 13th meeting released on Wednesday. A down meeting, the benchmark rate was kept steady for the third time to maintain a 5.25 percent to 5.5 percent range. The decision was also seen as the clearest signal yet of an end to its aggressive rate hike campaign. This came as the FOMC, responsible for setting rates, said its policy had likely reached or was close to its peak for the current tightening cycle. During the two-day session, participants also acknowledged the progress made in the battle to bring down inflation. In fact, consumer prices in the U.S. slowed to a five-month low in November, with the Consumer Price Index a key gauge of inflation rising 3.1 percent on year. The CPI has been slowing after it hit 9.1% in June 2022. Three rate cuts are expected, each by a quarter percentage point by the end of 2024. However, the minutes noted high uncertainty regarding the timing, saying the actual policy path will depend on how the economy evolves. That could mean they are keeping options open, with further monetary tightening potentially on the table as a response to changing economic conditions. December's FOMC minutes also echoed the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell's remarks after the meeting. Powell changed the tune on the central bank's monetary policy, saying the end of the tightening campaign is, quote, in sight. However, he still took a cautionary stance on cutting rates, saying the 2 percent inflation target is yet to be achieved. While we believe that our policy rate is likely at or near its peak for this tightening cycle, the economy has surprised forecasters in many ways since the pandemic. Ongoing progress toward our 2 percent inflation objective is not assured. Following the reaffirmation of the Federal Reserve stance in recent minutes, U.S. 10-year Treasury yields experienced a decline. 
It extended losses for a fourth day, topping the 4 percent mark on Wednesday, indicating growing concerns from investors about the Federal Reserve keeping a hawkish monetary policy for the time being. Shin Sebyeok, Arirang News. South Korea's foreign exchange reserves rose for the second consecutive month in December. Data from the Bank of Korea Thursday shows that the country's foreign exchange reserves, a barometer of its financial stability, came to 420.1 billion U.S. dollars at the end of December. That is up more than $3 billion compared to the month before, marking the second straight month of increase in foreign reserves. The agency attributed the rise to the dollar index falling around 1.5 percent last month against major currencies and subsequently boosting the converted value of non-dollar assets. As of the end of November, South Korea is the world's ninth largest holder of foreign reserves. Hyundai Motor Company and affiliate Kia Corporation saw record high sales in the U.S. last year thanks to stronger demand for electric and hybrid vehicles. According to Hyundai Motor America on Wednesday local time, over 801,000 cars were sold in 2023, an 11% increase from the year before. In December alone, automobile sales jumped by 4% on year, with around 75,000 units sold, a record for any December. Meanwhile, Kia also saw all time high sales of around 782,000 last year, up 13% compared to 2022. About four out of ten households are now single-person households in South Korea amid an increasing number of unmarried and elderly people living alone. According to data from the Ministry of Interior and Safety on Thursday, the total number of households registered as single-person households as of December in 2023 stood at over 9.9 .9 million, up more than 211,000 from a year earlier. With the total number of households registered last year standing at over 23.9 million, the proportion of single-person households stood at 42 percent. The figure is much higher than the 34 percent estimate given by Statistics Korea. Parkinson's disease leads to trembling limbs and gradual paralysis. As the disease progresses, South Korean researchers have developed a drug to fundamentally treat it. Chung Woon Joo has the details. Muhammad Ali, one of the greatest boxers in history, suffered from Parkinson's disease, a disorder that leads to slower movements, tremors, and muscle paralysis. The disease's motor symptoms result when a specific area of the brain degenerates. This is due to a shortage of dopamine secreting cells. Symptom relief is the best option, and a cure is yet to be found. South Korean researchers, however, may have found a way to treat Parkinson's using stem cells obtained from human embryos. They are cultivated for over a week and grown into millions of cells. When a signaling molecule is introduced to a part of it, protrusions extend out and take on the appearance of nerve cells secreting dopamine. The purity of these dopamine-secreting cells is 99.57 percent, significantly safer compared to the 90 percent purity achieved by research teams in the U.S. and Europe. We developed a process of differentiating embryonic stem cells into dopamine cells using only small molecules, allowing us to obtain a high yield of dopamine cells and carry out mass production through three-dimensional cultivation. When the developed cells were injected into mice with dopamine cell damage from Parkinson's disease, dopamine was regenerated, completely curing motor impairment in 16 weeks. Based on animal experiment results, the research team have come up with an appropriate dosage for humans. Starting in May, the research team entered clinical trials involving developed dopamine cells being given to actual Parkinson's patients. Chong Eun Joo, Arirang News. South Korea's attacking male feeder Yi Gang In got on the score sheet Wednesday evening local time as Paris Saint Germain beat Toulouse to win French Super Cup in Paris. Yi opened the scoring after just three minutes before teammate Kylian Mbappe added a second to give PSG's 2 0 victory and a record 12th Super Cup title. 
is set to join up with the Korean national team in the United Arab Emirates on Friday ahead of the 2023 Asian Cup in Qatar, with South Korea seeking a first title in 64 years. Last year, there was an unprecedented number of people being forcibly displaced, driven by the wars in Ukraine and Gaza, regional conflicts and natural disasters. But there are many people around the world working to make things better. Chun hye Kyung, the head of the UN Refugee Agency's Korea office, is one of them. Our Song Yujin has our story. A very challenging year. That's how Chun hye Kyung, the representative of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees Korea, describes the year 2023. Last year, the world saw a record number of more than 114 million people displaced, including refugees and asylum seekers. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, the situation in Ukraine uh, continue to evolve. Uh, we have seen uh, Sudan evolving the situation there. Um, Gaza, as we still see on the news, uh, and then also like earthquakes. Uh. As the first Korean national to lead the UNHCR's Korean office, Ms. Chun brings over two decades of experience in refugee and humanitarian work. Her journey began with listening to stories about the Korean War growing up. Our parents' generation worked so hard to build the country, right? So, uh, and I grew up outside Korea when I was a child, so uh, I was also very much interested in minority issues, right? So uh, I did study uh, refugee migration issues, and, and I think naturally I ended up uh, in the UN. Uh, UN Looking ahead, she hopes things will get better in the new year. Uh, hopefully, uh, politics and humanitarian assistance can be divided so that uh, we could work uh, in, in the areas where people need our assistance. And she sees a significant role for South Korea in addressing these challenges. It has substantially increased its ODA share. Uh, and, and, and there has been very uh, positive pledges uh, to UNHCR, but also to other agencies, right, uh, and organizations. And also we see that uh, with the Republic of Korea joining the UN Security Council, 24 and 25. Beyond governmental efforts, last December, eight religious groups in Korea submitted the first ever joint pledge of its kind to the UNHCR's Global Refugee Forum. From this year, Ms. Chun will take up a new role as the director of the UNHCR Regional Bureau for Asia and the Pacific. Describing her term in Korea as rewarding, she recalls working on the country's lack of universal birth registration. If you are a foreign uh, parents born uh, baby here, you know, like uh, uh, you, you don't, the, the Korean government doesn't uh, register you, right? So uh, there have been a lot of uh, work in the past years and, uh, and you know, re related legislation has been under discussion now. So the reason why I started joining the UN and 20 something years later, I come back to Korea and mm -hmm. I am working on the same right, issues, right? Senses the gravity of the greater responsibility, Ms. Chun says she is ready. I think uh, uh, in the region we have uh, many uh, states uh, with different interests, but uh, when it comes to refugees, as it was shown at the Global Refugee Forum, uh, hopefully we can come together and I can be a constructive bridge uh, to do that. Uh. Song Yujin, Arirang News. Let's take a look at the latest news in the world now. Russia and Ukraine announced on Wednesday that they have exchanged almost 500 prisoners of war. It is the first prisoner swap in nearly five months and the largest documented swap of soldiers so far in the conflict. Ukraine said 230 prisoners of war, including six civilians, returned home from Russian captivity, while Russia saw the release of 248 military personnel by Ukraine.
The United Arab Emirates was involved in the exchange and said its strong, friendly relations with both Moscow and Kiev allowed it to mediate the complex POW swap negotiation. Ukraine's military intelligence agency also praised the UAE's efforts. Kyiv and Moscow have exchanged prisoners on a number of instances since the war began in February 2022. In Mexico, 31 kidnapped migrants have been rescued by Mexican state authorities. Mexico's interior minister confirmed on Wednesday their safe rescue. In the state of Tamaulipas, near the U.S. border on Saturday, unknown gunmen kidnapped 31 migrants who were on a bus heading from Monterrey to the border town of Matamoros. The migrants, mostly from Latin American countries such as Venezuela and Ecuador, were then forced off the bus into five vans. Tamaulipas governor, Américo Villarreal Anaya, stated that the National Guard and the armed forces brought the kidnapped migrants to safety. A record number of migrants traveled from Central America and Mexico, attempting to reach the United States in 2023. Human rights groups have been warning of an escalating kidnapping crisis in Mexico's Tamaulipas border region. Chinese carmaker BYD overtook Tesla as the world's top-selling electric car maker in the final quarter of 2023. BYD, which stands for Build Your Dreams, outsold Tesla in battery-only full electric cars for the first time in the fourth quarter last year, selling 526,000 to Tesla's 484,000 units. Sales of BYD EVs benefited from having a lower price point than Tesla. Warren Buffett-backed BYD said it produced 3.02 million new energy vehicles, or NEVs, in 2023, of which 1.6 million are battery-only electric vehicles. This puts BYD only slightly behind Tesla's 1.84 million fully electric cars produced in the same period. The Rolex Sydney Hobart yacht race came to a close on Wednesday as a last boat crossed the finish line carrying a cat named Ollie. Ollie and his owner, Bob Williams' boat, named the Sylph 6, was the oldest boat in the race and received a warm welcome and cheers as it came into the Constitution dock with Ollie up on the deck to greet his fans. The Sylph 6 left Sydney for Hobart on December 26th with a crew of four, including Ollie, the cat. Before that, Ollie and Williams had sailed around the country for the past five years, even across the Tasman Sea to New Zealand. Williams described Oli as my friend and mate. Kim Jiang, Arirang News. Good afternoon. Yesterday's wintry precipitation brought colder air to the country. We had a much colder start to the day than Wednesday, but was still warmer than norms. And highs are rising fast to go up higher than Wednesday afternoon. Warmer than averages mean dustier air most of the time, and today is no exception. Stagnant airflow will push ultra-fine dust levels up in most parts of the country again. Don't forget to mask up. We had a sunny skies to start off the day with some fog and then upper parts of the country are seeing cloudier skies this afternoon while the rest of the country is having sunny skies and will remain sunny all day today. Afternoon temperatures are a couple of degrees higher than Wednesday across Korea. It will continue to stay warmer than norms through Friday than this weekend, looking like being freezing cold for any outdoor plans. So please do layer up, but it will not be unbearably cold. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions.
There is a Korean saying called Takshim Samil, which translates to three days of determination. It's used to describe when you set a goal but give up after just three days. Now, if you're feeling this with your New Year's resolutions, here's some tips from the Chicago Tribune, which are all about changing how you frame the resolution. First, change it to something you're excited about doing rather than the achievement. They will give you an immediate reward which will keep you going. Second, avoid avoidance. So choose something like drink more tea instead of avoiding social media before bed. Well, we're now four days into the new year, and hopefully these tips could help you go beyond 작심 삼일.